Hello, I'm Frank Morris and this is my video tip of the week from studythecode.com. This week we're going to start a new series of going through the glossaries at random of the I-codes and the National Electrical Code. This week we are going to discuss addicts, comma, habitable, or better known as habitable addicts, as described in the 2009 International Residential Code. This is a new definition to the 2009 IRC. A habitable attic can be finished or unfinished. One of the major changes with this edition of this definition is that na it now, if it meets all of the items we're going to discuss today, it is not considered an additional story to the house. In the previous codes, basically if the attic's floors were decked, the attic was considered another story which could present real problems in a, an existing three-story house. Once they decked the attic in the previous codes, this existing three-story house now became a four-story house and reverted to the requirements of the 2006 International Building Codes and not the 2006 International Residential Codes. For a habitable attic not to be considered a story in the 2009 International Residential Code, it must meet all of the following conditions. Number one, the occupiable floor area must be a minimum of 70 square feet as per the requirements of Section R304. Number two, the occupiable floor area must have a ceiling height in accordance with Section 305, which basically states that the minimum ceiling height must be 7 foot. Where you have rooms with sloped ceilings, such as in an attic, at least 50% of the required floor area, or 35 square feet, must have a ceiling height of at least 7 feet. Any room with a ceiling height of less than 5 feet cannot be considered as part of the required floor area. Number three, the occupiable space is enclosed by the roof assembly above, knee walls if applicable, on the sides and the floor ceiling assembly below. Also, since this space is now classified as habitable, it will trigger other code requirements such as smoke alarms as discussed in section R314, carbon monoxide alarms as discussed in section R315, emergency escape and rescue openings as discussed in section R310, and the proper means of egress as discussed in section R311. I'm Frank Morris, and this is another one of my video tips of the week. For more detailed information on this code item and other code items, you can find them at our website at www.studythecode.com. Thanks for watching.